Oh, hey there. Yeah, welcome back, strangers. I know. It's been a while. I apologize. Um, I've been stuck on the Missouri River all summer long, doing work, haven't been home much, and unfortunately it's been hard to get back into these videos. I can't tell you how many times I've done that intro exactly, but we're going to do a little bit different video here. Why do I have a pack on my back? What's going on? What am I doing here in the bluffs? So, it is mid-October. We're getting ready, actually leave tomorrow, for a western Idaho mule deer hunt in the backcountry. Six days living out of this here pack. So, as a rookie western hunter, backcountry hunter, I kind of want to show you guys what gear it takes to try and make this happen. What you guys can look at for weight, give you some ideas. I've done, I mean, we've been prepping for this for like two years, so some suggestions. I'm not right, I'm not wrong. Um, you guys can hopefully build off of it, see what you can use in the future, and uh, then after we get done with the whole hunt, we'll probably circle back around and tell you what shit I didn't need, maybe what stuff I wish I would have brought, and uh, hopefully we can all learn from it. So let's head back to the house, and uh, we'll get to digging into the big old pack. So stay tuned. You won't be upset. All right, made her back to the house here. Uh, got everything kind of spread out here on the editing table, and we're gonna go through what's uh, what's in the old pack. To start out, I'm using the Commander X Extreme Pack from Alps Outdoors. It's a really reasonable pack. I think you guys have seen this. I actually use this whitetail hunting. Um, it has a, a meat shelf in it, which I use to um, transport my uh, hang and hunt setup. So. It's pretty versatile with straps and clips and everything made for the West, but I use it here in the bluffs and it's, uh, I bought it for this trip and figured uh, might as well use it whitetail hunting too. So I don't know the leaders on it. I'll put all that information below, but um, it's got a top um, pack, the main body, bottom entrance. It's got a rifle holder and it actually has a padded and really well lined, it's like neoprene lined uh, spotting scope um, compartment, a couple side pockets, like I said, the meat shelf, and then there is a, uh, a front pack that goes on um, that I'm going to keep all my camera gear in, uh, batteries and SD cards and things like that that attaches to the front here. So, awesome pack. Uh, I love it so far. It's very adjustable. Um, it's not a $600 pack. I'm not saying those aren't good, but um, I like it. it. It's treated me well this far, and we'll see how it does on the trip. So, put that to the side. All right, I guess starting out from there, we'll go sleeping stuff. Um, one thing you won't see in this whole setup is a tent. Um, my buddy Justin actually made our tent, so that's pretty cool. We went the TP style tent due to the winter conditions, the structure, the wind, and everything. Also allows us to have a titanium wood stove, which he also has. So that'll be something that we'll have to kind of split up when we get to the trailhead and figure out who's taking what. And based on weights, we'll kind of portion everything out. But um, that in mind, I have the Nemo Disco. It's good to 15 degrees. It's actually a spoon style sleeping bag. Um, it's got some vents on the front to that allow you to escape heat pretty easily without having to unzip your sides. So it's still mummy style, but it allows somebody like me to sleep on their side or on their stomach. Um, so that is, it's a little, little more pricey, but um, I figure I might as well use something, get something uh, that's pretty high quality. I plan to do this quite often. So. Uh, one benefit to it is the it's a it's a down sleeping bag, but the down is treated with Nicwax, which is a waterproofing agent. So uh, typical, you use it on your like Gore-Tex and things like that. So 
great design. I've used it uh, doing some summer camping and those uh, vents have really helped uh, in the warmer weather. So, also have the Nemo Vector insulated sleeping pad. Um, it's actually a long and wide. The standard one I think weighs like just, just under two pounds. Uh, I think it's like 1.7 and the long and wide added like an ounce or two. So I went with that, give you a little more space. Uh, like I said, it is insulated. It's got some reflective layers in it to help uh, reflect the heat back up to you and not let that heat come or that cold come to the ground. So, all right. So cooking, um, I have a MSR wind burner stove. Um, it comes self-contained. Uh, everything comes in the comes inside the uh, actual cooking pot. It's pretty well made, lightweight. Um, reviews say it's awesome. I haven't really been able to put it to the test, but it actually has enough room inside the top here to hold a uh, fuel canister. That's the only thing I don't have in my cooking kit here. Um, my buddy got a discount on those, so I have to add one of those in when we meet up tomorrow. So. <clears throat> Then we have a titanium long-handled spoon from Raccoon. Um, why long-handled spork, I guess, is what it really is. is help you get into those uh, mountain house bags and not get your hands and knuckles all dirty. So it was, I think it was like six or seven bucks on Amazon. I asked for it for Christmas. So do you need one? No, just a, I guess an amenity, right? Uh, so that all goes into a Outdoor Research Ultralight Dry Bag, um, <clears throat> which will also house my SteriPen. Uh, if you haven't seen these, they use um, ultraviolet light. Um, you might be able to see that. It obviously doesn't do anything for filtration, but it'll get rid of a lot of that bacteria that uh, is bad for you. So batteries are supposed to last pretty well on it, um, like a year. So I'm not really worried about that, but you just like 90 seconds, stir up um, like a Nalgene bottle and uh, go to town. She's ready to drink. So also got a uh, collapsible little two liter water bladder here, ultra lightweight, um, rolls up when you're not using it. Uh, this will allow us to carry extra water if we have to like hike down and hike up and, you know, make, uh, make the most of getting water. So that'll help come in handy. Uh, typical Nalgene, it's actually still full from my hike, but uh, just a Nalgene, I can mix uh, Propel up and stuff in there if I want some electrolytes. Um, and then a just a Camelback 2 liter that will go in my backpack. So that's basically what will go, uh, that's like cooking and like the hydration side I guess, that will go inside this uh, waterproof ultralight uh, outdoor research bag, dry bag. Um, all right, so we got food, which I just weighed it before this. So we're going on, a, we're going six days, like I said, um, back country, living on the packs. So I'm going to do this all in a different video because it kind of can get pretty complex if uh, you're shooting for certain calorie counts and what do you want for weight. But in the end, I got six days worth of food inside this dry bag, which is one of the heaviest units I have together here. Um, it's It weighs 11.92 pounds, so there you go. Two pounds of food per day. Um, and I think that's shooting for like 32, 33, 3400 calories per day. But like I said, we'll get into that. Um, that's a whole different topic. I guess I forgot. I do have a Thermorass pillow uh, collapsible down. It's just a creature comfort. Um, you know, you could use your your clothes or whatever, but I figure might as well have this. I want to sleep. I know I'm gonna be busting my ass, so we'll have that in the old tent with us. Already touched on the Nalgene. Um, we'll go kill kit here. So I went with the GoHunt.com. You can get one of these Caribou Muley kits. It's got everything as far as game bags in it. Um, for uh, all your quarters, your miscellaneous meat, things like that. Uh, everything's got some really nice um, reflective 
hanging loops on them, supposed to be durable, reusable. In this bag, it actually comes with this bag, I put um, a work sharp, portable sharpener, a tracking tape or a marking tape, and some paracord to hang up your bag with. So basically, this bag right there, I know where it's at. I can grab it, go. Um, it's got everything you need in it. I don't know if I'll keep my knife in there. That might go in a different pocket. Obviously, we'll be, uh, be using that quite frequently um, throughout the trip. So, but yes, that's uh, it all goes in this little bag, and you're ready to rip. One thing I did uh, invest in right out the gate here is a Garmin inReach um, with your SOS button right there on the side. So this thing is not just a GPS. Um, it's not like a high quality GPS. I plan on using my phone with Onyx Maps in airplane mode for most of my my uh, my GPS work and aerials and things like that and mapping. But it can do that. It has GPS functionality. It actually it's on the iridium connection, so it, it contacts and communicates with the satellites, which allow you to have service and communicate no matter what. So check these out. You can do preset messages. I think the plan that I'm on is like 24, 25, 30 bucks, somewhere in there um, per month allows you to not just hail uh, SOS if you need it, but communicate. You can send messages to um, some emergency contacts and things like that if you need uh, to let people know what's going on. Also, your family can get a hold of you too, right? If you got a death in the family and they need to let you know, God forbid, um, they can get a hold of you. So I think it's going to come in handy in the future, and that's why I invested in it. So, Along those same lines, I have the uh, Outdoor Research Backcountry Organizer, which is my survival kit. Uh, there's quite a few things in here. Uh, we have tape, super glue, lighters, fire starters. Uh, there's an adhesive target in here. Actually, two adhesive targets in case you knock something off um, on your rifle. There's a trauma kit with uh, a clotting sponge in here and some pads and gauze and band-aids. Um, just various different things that are probably going to be necessary. Uh, extra batteries, things like that. Um, we can probably delve into that at a later date, but handy little device keeps everything in there actually um, it, it holds quite a bit so that is the survival kit uh, first aid kit all in one there all right we are using the uh, vortex diamond back I think this is the 60 if I do remember correctly yeah 20 to 60 spotting scope plan to do quite a bit of glass in here um, so that is going to come in handy. Um, the only thing you're not seeing here is the Vortex uh, High Country tripod. That is actually what the camera's sitting on right now. I actually use that quite a bit for my camera work, and I love it. It's uh, it's adjustable. It's it's sturdy. It's steady. So I think that's going to come in handy. Pretty lightweight too. So along those lines of. Um, Optics, we got Diamondback uh, 10 by 42 um, binoculars in a FHF gear um, vinyl harness, which also houses, um, I got my tags in the zip pocket. I have extra ammo in there, um, a lens wipe for cleaning off optics. You got your smoke in a bottle, um, and then you can see on the bottom here, most importantly, I have, <coughs> excuse me, um, I have uh, bear spray. So this is just an inert bottle, practice bottle, but this is a handy little spot to have it. It's right here on your chest. Um, you, can, you can deploy it right from here, you know, if you get close encounters. You may I ask, we're going to Idaho. Not this area we're actually going to um, doesn't have too many bears. Black bears, yes, mountain lions, yes, wolves, yes, grizzlies. They've been known to come in the area once in a while, but not like a predominant predator. So why? Just for peace of mind, I guess. I'm not 
I haven't spent much time in the mountains. Um, I don't plan on bringing a sidearm, and if something goes awry, at least you know you have something, and I think it's something good to constantly be carrying out west. Um, if you're gonna be in Grizzly Bear country, you just know where it is. Just a good habit to get in. So that's what we're gonna be using around our neck. Um, along with the optics, I do have a phone scope. Hooks up to your phone, goes right on the spying scope, get some cool videos, um, maybe, maybe a few kill shots. Uh, but we can also compare, right? If we see something and the other guys, you know, haven't seen seen anything good, we can kind of show them, take pictures, um, compare what we've seen. So handy little device, don't weigh much, and they're they're pretty cost effective. So, and then uh, Vortex uh, by bino adapter for the tripod. So this allows you to screw this on to the front of your binos on that front screw, and then you can slide it on your uh, tripod and use your binos. Um, and then if you need to get out there ways, you can end up using the, the spotting scope. So just allows you to be versatile. Um, we have a Petzl Attic Core uh, headlamp. Pretty impressed with this little guy. Uh, it's got a lithium ion rechargeable battery and you'll understand why I went with that once we go through the camera gear but um, it does also take uh, AAA batteries so I have three extra AAA batteries in case the battery goes out but one thing I really like about this light is you can lock it um, so right now if you push the button all that happens is it blinks the light blinks so that means when it's in your pack you can lock it and if it's getting bumped around and jostled you aren't burning up your battery. I don't know how many times that happens. Just deer hunting or duck hunting around here and burn up batteries. So that's what's going to be our headlamp. And then we have this little guy as a backup. Um, this is a Princeton Tech Amp uh, 1L. It's just a handy little light. Um, you can take this little cone off. You got a little flashlight if you need it. Runs on triple A's. Um, you can hang it in a tent, right, if uh, you need to have an overhead light. So just an extra little light um, that will be uh, readily accessible. A couple of comfort features, um, toothbrush, sawed off toothbrush I should say, um, small thing of toothpaste, a few flossers, some ibuprofen, and then for this gnarly beard, I do not want to deal with getting it untangled after six days out there, so every morning I can comb my beard. I took a little hairbrush, cut it off, um, that's all in this handy little packet that the toothbrush and toothpaste came in. So, and then we got some free deodorant. Um, just gonna help you, help you stay clean as much as you can. Uh, we have some sunglasses here. It's, it's snowing out there. Um, I don't feel like sitting on a mountain, uh, burning my eyes out on a daily basis. So, just a crappy pair of sunglasses. Blaze orange hat. Uh, beanie. I also have a blaze orange um, baseball cap. Blaze orange is not required in Idaho, but um, I feel like it's beneficial. Um, we know where each other's at. You can use it to signal. Other hunters can see out there. It just helps. So um, get into clothes now. Rock in some first light catalyst gloves. Haven't used them yet. Um, my my only complaint with these gloves is it's very, very, very tight. I'm trying to get them on. May have to have uh, my buddy Justin who sews uh, add a little something here. But other than that, once you get them on, they're comfy, warm from what it seems like, and you can get them off easy. It's just a pain in the butt to get them on. So those will be probably in that top sack, easily accessible. Um, we have the first light. I don't even know what the brand or what uh, model these are, but these are like the original First Light base layer. They're the heavier ones. Um, these are going to be the Long Johns. I probably have these on all day, every day. Um, darn, darn tough padded hiking socks. Um, these, I've kind of played around with socks in my boots for a while now. Um, don't know if I made the right purchase on size. And foot box wise but um, I do have a problem with my foot sliding a little forward so I went with a more padded sock that has actually allowed my foot to tighten up inside of the, the boot um, that has helped 
ex officio boxers. These, um, I actually have two pairs of these. These just, they work, they don't stink, um, they're comfortable. Kuyu Talus Hybrid Pants. Um, this is the only pair of uh, unit of Kuyu I own, but they are very purpose built. So they got side vents, they have knee pads. This actually, this darker um, material on here, this is all waterproof, including the butt. Um, these are a little thicker pant, help resist some of that wind. All the seams are taped. I'm just very impressed with this pant. It's, uh, I think, going to help out sitting in the snow, um, you know, doing any anything, kneeling on the ground. It, they're just going to be very purpose-built. I'm going to wear these every day, so hopefully, uh, hopefully that holds true. We have the, um, this is a first light, I believe it's the Kiln, um, no, it's the Arrowwool Fuse um, Henley. It's a little bit of a more breathable uh, base layer. I'm probably, like I said, wear this this while I'm doing the active stuff so we're not sweating, uh, sweating our butt off. And then I have an Arrowwool t-shirt as well from First Light. So that's going to be what I wear in active um, while we're moving around. Help shed some of that heat. Um, and then from there, extra clothes. We have the, um, this, it, this is the First Light Kiln hoodie. It's a gridded fleece hoodie. Um, it's DWR treated. I've worn it actually here on some early Wisconsin hunts. Besides picking up a shit ton of birds and being a pain in the butt to get out, it actually, I've worn it duck hunting in the mist, in the rain, in the drizzle, and it, it sheds water pretty well. So um, I have an extra t shirt. Uh, it's just a, I think it's a Grizzly brand t shirt, Wolverine. It's kind of like that athletic Under Armour material. Just in case you hike in one day, hike out one day, whatever, you're, you're hiking around and you get sweaty, you can change that base layer. Um, that'll probably be the sweatiest thing you got on. So. And this is the First Light, now this says Kiln. This is the First Light Kiln hoodie. This is the First Light, sorry, correction. First Light Klamath hoodie. This is the gridded fleece one. This is the this is like their uncompadre hoodie. Um, just a good merino wool, um, additional base layer. You transition in and out of that. Another pair of ex officio boxers. This is the first light Seek, um, which is their southeastern Alaska um, the top rain jacket. Um, I've actually been pretty impressed with this. The reason I'm bringing this, not so much rain is um, predicted for the upcoming week, but it's going to be a wind blocker. It's a rain layer, waterproof layer, and a wind blocker. I don't have to carry, you know, two up, two different items there. This is just going to, this is going to do it for me. I tested out last year, late season duck hunting. I think it worked out well. Um, and I paired that with, for insulation, I paired that with the, um, this, I, this is the Uncompadre puffy jacket. So, um, I love it. It's, uh, it's a, sorry, it's a vest, not a jacket, but uh, it's great, it's comfy, fits great. I've worn it early season, um, fishing, worn it duck hunting, like I said. I uh, haven't used it in the White Tail Woods yet, but it's warm. I like a vest, so um, can pair all this stuff with those base layers. Put a vest on. Worst case, you got to put your windproof layer on. You're good to go. Um, we have another pair of darn tough socks, the same style, and that's it. So that all goes inside of a. Uh, I think this is a 30 liter um, Outdoor Research Ultralight waterproof bag. Don't have to worry about it. Uh, I can stay in my pack and kind of pull it out, pull out masses as you need it. Um, so that's the plan there. Boot wise, um, I went with the crispy. These are the Western River GTXs. They are only available at Shields. Um, specifically made for Shields. If you live in the Midwest, you know what Shields is. That was my biggest problem 
trying to find a boot, right, that fit. Like, who in the Midwest has boots? Didn't really matter because I ordered them online and I didn't use their free return policy. That's why we're stuck with a pair that might not fit my foot as well as I should. Now, I probably should have went, although my foot moves around a lot, it touches the toe box, I probably should have went a half size bigger and we wouldn't have had that problem. But I have worn them. I've learned how to lace them. Like I said, I went with a bigger padded sock. Um, actually, just that hike we were, we did on the intro here. I was wearing them, and they're great. I put some miles on them. They don't take um, anything to break in. They're Italian made. Check them out. Um, like I said, she is pretty reasonable price. All right, a few other odds and ends here. We do have some combat wipes, biodegradable. Um, they're. Uh, scent free, um, black, doesn't really matter, but just pick them up off Amazon. Those are going to help uh, help throughout, throughout the trip. So there's 25 of them if I go through more than that, be an issue. Contractor garbage bag. I'm bringing this per recommendation and research. Uh, everybody says they come in handy for when you're cutting up your deer, right? You have a large plastic surface to lay stuff out on. Um, unfold this, you can cut it in half, whatever you need to do, but gives you a spot that's clean, free of dirt, um, you can cut stuff up on. Also, if I need to have something that's waterproof, throw stuff in it, whatever, we got a contractor bag. Um, Thermarest, uh, this is like the original Thermarest Z-Lite pads. This is going to be my glassing pad. I bought one pad for 30 bucks and cut it up into thirds and then two other guys that are coming with get the other thirds so uh, you can use it to put your feet on uh, while you're getting ready, change your socks, uh, change your pants, whatever, sit on it um, and it's lightweight, it really it weighs like nothing. And then this like I said is the front pack to my, uh, to my pack, it goes right on the front with these clips. Um, it has all my camera stuff in it. Batteries, SD cards. Alright, I this is quite a bit of weight here, but I think it's going to be a necessity. These are two 25,000 amp hour um, power packs. They're pre-charged, ready to rip. This one we're going to try out is solar powered. It doesn't charge very quick, but I can leave it out and at least get some juice. Charge my phone. Um, charge camera batteries, anything. Uh, my buddy Justin is coming, got his solar panels as well, so we'll see how that works. Also, just miscellaneous camera gear, headphones for listening to audio, a couple GoPro mounts, um, chargers, some lens cloths. So, all of that will go in here. There's a couple other connectors. Um, the fluid head that's sitting on the camera right now, that'll go on here, and then I think that's about it. But yeah, overall, um, that's what we got. I'm very excited to kind of test everything out um, on the fly here in a couple days. Uh, I think we'll learn a lot. I hope to bring you guys back some reviews and kind of what, what you guys can expect going forward. But hopefully this shows you the basics, right? Um, I know that I weighed my pack with everything in it tonight that I just laid out on the table, including the camera and all the camera equipment and the tripod, and it was at 52 pounds. That had one full Nalgene of water in it, so add probably another two pounds if you're going to fill up a, uh, a bladder, but you know, looking at like 54 pounds, it's pretty doable. You just got to prep yourself to all that kind of weight. I know it's probably still going to be a butt kicker once we get up in the elevations, but nonetheless, that's kind of what we're doing. Um, hope to have everything. Links in the description. You guys can kind of follow along there, and if you're interested in anything, you can follow the links and take a look at it. So I hope this helps. Um, thank you again for stopping in. It's a little bit different video than we normally do. Hopefully, you guys will have some hunting and fishing action coming your way soon. But again, we, we always appreciate the support. Um, if you guys are interested in some apparel, um, like this shirt or with sweatshirts, um, various other t-shirts,
go check out the free pro website. Um, the link is in the description below. And as always, don't forget to thank your vets. They're the reason we are all free pros. So wish us luck. We'll catch you in the next one.